And welcome in to the Backstage Pass here, of course. It is a hump day, Wednesday. Hard to believe the week is almost over here. Uh, Brandon Morrell, Jeff McMahon, again, presented by our good friends over at Tour Guitars. So check them out at uh, tourguitars.us and also check them out at bangtail.com for Bangtail Whiskey and also the Easy Liquor app. Download it and, uh, yeah, the bottle goes right to your door there from Easy Liquor and Bangtail Whiskey, too, as well. Uh, pleased to welcome in here Brandon Morrell, Jeff McMahon, our guest today, first of two shows. Uh, Canadian recording artist and country musician Corp Lund to the show. Corp, what's up, man? Hey, how are you? Oh, we're doing good and pleased to uh, have you today and a lot of good questions to ask about a fantastic piece of work out there uh, you guys have put out there. The Deluxe, I always like saying that word, uh, Agricultural Tragic is out there. We're going to play some songs uh, off of that today, Corp, too. Well, I tell you, man, it's been quite the year, as everybody knows, uh, from this COVID thing, but you were kind of telling us before the show and kind of share this with the audience a little bit that this past year with the concerts and live shows slowing down, uh, you've worked more on songwriting and, and a little bit of playing guitar. Kind of fill the audience in on how, you, how that's kept you busy. Yeah, I mean, it. if you're doing what I do for a living, you kind of get a cycle going. You, you know, write a record, record a record, tour the record, and that takes a couple of years, and then you just rinse, lather, repeat, you know. But so if, this, if COVID would have happened during a writing period, it wouldn't have even hardly changed nothing for me, but... As it stands, we had our first record in three or four years. We were real proud of it and had the tour bus rented and the kick drum graphic printed and the, you know all this all ready to go. We got five five days into a, a one week into a five month tour in Colorado and they had to send us home. But and then uh, so that's a drag. But if you take away put that on a mental shelf, the rest of it's been okay because I've been doing this my whole adult life and I'm I've got the you know farm kid ranch kid work ethic so i probably would have never allowed myself to take a year off to work on just kind of work on guitar playing and stuff if it wouldn't have been right. for me so it's been okay I, i've been taking guitar lessons actually and singing a lot and working on new tunes and learning a bunch of old tunes i've meant to learn for ages i've just had i've actually fallen in love with music again i, I sit mm -hmm. there and drink beer and just listen to music late into the night now i haven't done that in ages <laughs> so it's been okay it's kind of been like a cool like uh what would you call it a mandatory uh, professional development sabbatical, I guess we call it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good term to have. Hey, growing up, I mean, your music uh, stretches kind of far and wide out there. The sound is really good, especially this album, 90 Seconds of Your Time, Old Men. Uh, I think you ought to try whiskey and raining horses and a lot of good stuff on there. Uh, who would you say you were kind of jamming out to, Corb, uh, growing up there from a musician standpoint? Um, the first the first album I remember really liking was <laughs> Marty, Marty Robbins' Gunfighter Ballads and Trail Songs. You know, El Paso and Big Iron and all that. Sure. Uh, my grandpas are both ranchers. They used to sing some of those old songs like Little Joe the Wrangler and Strawberry Roan and stuff. So that was the first music I was exposed to. And I still love that record to my to this day. It's probably my favorite. And um, I'm just lucky my parents weren't into Boney M or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing you listen to is always what your parents listen to. But I think the first stuff I got into that was not my parents was the Eagles and Bob oh, Singer. Yeah. Bob okay. Seger and stuff like that in like grade eight, you know, seventh or eighth grade. And then yeah, I yeah. got into um I got into heavier stuff in high school. I was into Black Sabbath and and uh Deep Purple and that kind of stuff. So I was in actually in a rock in a rock band in my twenties. It was pretty really cool. yeah, called ah. Smalls. We okay. did like uh underground indie metal kind of stuff. <laughs> I think that per <laughs> I think that permanently it, it's I think it's like my music is kind of a combination of two things. I think it's like having a Western cowboy background and growing up that way. And then, and then spending my formative musical years in an indie rock scene where you're really encouraged to come up with your own sounds and find unique approaches to music. And so when, when I finally retired that thing and started writing Western songs, my songwriting approach has kind of transferred over. So I'm, I'm always looking for weird quirks and ways to mix things up. And that's kind of the opposite of country radio, right? So <laughs> right. So that expl I think that might partly explain my quirky sound. <laughs> well, but but I mean, in uh, you know, full disclosure, I did not know your entire catalog prior to this interview. I, I um, but I've been listening to a lot of stuff, and I mean, you kind of narrow it down to those two things. But I mean, there's really a lot of different influences. I mean, you've got like some. There, there's a a swing tom thing at the beginning of of one of those songs and you've got like some, some rockabilly kind of Asbury Dukes kind of stuff. I mean, it's the, 
that's certainly there's a lot of room between um, Marty Robbins and the Eagles and Black Sabbath that still, I mean, there's, you know, I could, I could hear, Oh, he must've been listening to Louis Prima that day. And, <laughs> and, you know, uh, some of these songs sounds like, you know, uh, you and your buddies were, were kind of sitting around going, I dare you, I dare you to write a song about grizzly bears. You can't do it. You can't do it. Um, <laughs> well, couple things yeah you're right about all that stuff we i i like to write about unusual stuff i just i mean i write the occasional love song but i, I find a lot of guys use that sort of a, or people use that as a, a sort of default position that i i just doesn't interest me that much i mean if i if i go through something i'll write one about that or whatever but yeah. i write about there's just so many interesting things in the world to write about so i write about weird shit and then musically st- speaking you're right uh-huh. I, we mix I'm lucky because I have a really versatile band. My band's been with me, the same guys for like 16, 17 years. Mm-hmm. And they're yeah. super versatile. So anything I throw at them. So I, you know, I strip mine musical history for cool sh- stuff just to mix into, you're right, rockabilly, bluegrass, <clears throat> uh, haggard, mm-hmm. haggard kind of stuff, willy kind of stuff, little rock here and there, some some jazz, western swing, all of it. I love all of it. Honky tonk. I just put make a big stew and I just I'll, sh- I'll show my guys a tune and they'll pick up on it right away and we'll go down this road or that road. Or... I, and it and it and this record sounds like that's who cut the record. Is that is there or did you cut the record with your guys? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Cuz the the um that first I think it was the first track the um 90 seconds of your time where it's got that syncopated uh I can't remember the pattern, but there's a, a really clean drum rhythm descending yeah. kind of thing that almost feels like you kind of created it by playing the song live a lot. That's um, kind of, yeah, I know what you mean. There's that kind of, don't, 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 that kind of funk. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, mm-hmm. uh, that, that was probably the, I'm guessing it was probably the bass player's idea, but yeah, you're right. That just, yeah. Jamming. I, yeah. I mean, I feel like I'd be way, having it's kind of rare to have a have the same bunch of guys for that long and we, we have musical esp by now so i think it'd be unless it was an unusual circumstance i think it'd be a waste of of a resource not to use those guys because we have decades old chemistry right? we just know where each other are going and plus like i said they're all exceptional players and, re- and really versatile so yeah well but uh, well uh, versatile players yeah but but it also didn't seem like you know a lot of times living in nashville a lot of times they'll throw a whole bunch of stuff on the record and decide later which pieces to keep yeah, yeah. what they really like. And it sounded more like y'all kind of created it. There wasn't a whole lot of indecision. It was like, this is here for a reason. This is, there's nothing here. And that's also for a reason. It sounded very intentional. I don't know if that makes any sense, no, but that's, that's totally true. Different workflow, right? Like, cause yeah, we get in a room we just, we, we, played those tunes for a long time before we cut them live and okay so yeah Yeah. and we have a kind of a stripped down like we only have we're only a four piece so we um we i one one thing that i really feel is important is i'm a i'm a huge arrangement nut you know everything from you know the how many layers of guitars to what the tones are to the rhythmic feel all that stuff how many times you repeat the chorus after the bridge all that stuff i think that stuff is like more important than a lot of people realize because that's the nuts and bolts of how you're telling the story and, and communicating to people and so me and my guys spend a lot of time on arrangements like you know we'll we'll agonize over whether we should repeat the chorus or or not or you know sh- shit like that so like yeah that that gets real nuts and boltsy and real granular but i i feel that's really important work to do and I, the few times that i've cut things with you know just the studio people like they're great like they're, they can play circles around you but but there's no substitute for spending a bunch of time on the arrangement with people ahead of time. Right. Yeah. No. There's well, if you, but they're different approaches, they're both cool, but my approach has always been kind of a band unit thing. Well, and it makes it easy to reproduce live or easier. You know, you're able to reproduce. Yeah. Of course, if you're ever in Nashville and you do want somebody to sit on in B3 for, uh, for 90 seconds of your time, I know a guy. Yeah. The next guy. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Love that too. Love that. Yeah. yeah. I, like, I like that one too. That that's about mm-hmm. a true story, hey. Like 
I don't know if you heard me describe it before, but you know the Turnpike Troubadours? I'm sure you do. Oh, yeah. I know of them. Yeah. Yeah. Me and Evan are pretty good buddies, the singer. We went, we went on, a, we went on a, a elk hunting trip a couple of autumns ago up in Idaho. And right. the guy guiding us was a, he's a friend of ours. He's a probably in his mid 50s. He's like an ex US Army Ranger instructor guy. So super capable, right? And he had, mm -hmm. it was real rugged, like 20 mule, mule string, 20 miles up into the mountains, real, real rugged stuff. And, and on the eighth or ninth day of the hunt, all the mules and one of the one of the horses disappeared and we didn't know what happened to him so we spent the last couple of days of the hunt trying to find these animals and the whole time the our our, our guide who he's done some crazy stuff overseas i suspect right <laughs> yeah the whole time we're looking for the, the mules he's talking about how great it's going to be to find these guys and i grew up in these woods and i'm going to bury them and only over <laughs> find the bodies and stuff right i was like oh, <laughs> So the song is about me going like after a day or two this, I'm like, dude, I need 90 seconds of your time. We got to talk about like in my can polite Canadian way. Like, right, right, right. I don't want to be, I don't, I don't think I want to be an accessory to murder in the US penis. <laughs> so, are we really going to do this? He's like, no, I'll just shoot him in the leg. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and I've, I know some of those guys. I mean, I, I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't know that story, but I know the, the kind of guys you're talking about. I've got, some buddies, military guys are like bouncers and stuff. And they, they'll describe trouble they got into. And and they'll say, you know, I, I could do this and this and this. And he'd be dead in six seconds. I'm like, but you're just saying you could do that, right? Yeah. 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 He, they just want to they want to remember that they they can. They can. Uh, he's a great dude. He's definitely a guy you want on your side, though, right? Oh, I, please, please, yes. I'm the piano player. I'm not ready for for hardcore. I was in piano lessons. <laughs> and a damn good piano player at that. I'm going to vouch for him on that, too, at the same time. Corb, time for some music here on the show. Uh, Agricultural Tragic, the deluxe edition. 16 great songs out there across all the platforms. I guess since we've been talking about it, about a little 90 seconds of your time. What do you think? Oh, yeah, I can do that one, sure. All right. Great song. Let's see if I can pull it off here. You guys get the guitar? Oh, yeah, yeah, we're getting that guitar, yes, sir. It's hard enough to take your point, cause yeah, okay, fine. Out of three mules and a man just to come on tight. Snake River horse, Stephen ain't quite gone out of style. Yeah, okay, fine. Well, that's big four to four and kill on your mind. I'm gonna ask for my brother's 90 seconds of your time. Maybe try to change your mind, buddy. Don't wanna forget your hands, buddy. Here at home, peace time. You both know you're better off in them out of whole hills. And you can be alone with your thoughts and unconfirmed cues. The docks at the VA always be a pushing them pill. But we both know that all you need is them out of whole hills. With that big four to four and kill on your mind, all I'm gonna ask from your brother's nine seconds of your time. And maybe try to change your mind, buddy. Don't wanna see you get your hands, buddy. Give it home the peace time. You think you got a minute and a half to listen to a friend? Cause I said we go hunt out, we got tags for them. Well, let's take a minute and a half and just recognize decisions that affect your life and possibly mine. Was ever but a so surprised you train up a ranger? Easing up, cut them when she goes home, it radiates danger. All the folks that I know in the town treat them like a stranger. Why act so surprised he's an army ranger? With that big 44 and kill on your mind, all I'm gonna ask from their brothers 90 seconds of your time. Never try to change your mind, Curtis. Don't wanna see you get your hands dirty. Here at home, a peace time.
looking for one of the most beautiful and playable custom acoustics on the planet, look no further than Ed Rice at Toeir Guitars. Ed is a true artist, transforming exotic woods into magnificent, sweet-sounding instruments. Go to toeirguitars.us, that's T-O-I-R-G-U-I-T-A-R-S dot U-S, and contact Ed today. And back here with Corblon on the backstage pass. Of course, 90 seconds of your time is out there on that great album, Agricultural Tragic. Brandon Morrell, Jeff McMahon, great playing and great picking and singing there here on the show. Again, presented by Tour Guitars and Bangtail Whiskey. And, and I tell you, this album is just uh, fantastic. I go through it. Um, and I love every song on it. have played it multiple times. Uh, hey, as you kind of went into... The thought process you were talking about the different uh, you know genres and styles and the mix of everything corp was there kind of any challenging parts in in putting it together or did this kind of come out the way you guys envisioned everything we're pretty happy with it it's funny because you know the deluxe edition has three or four tunes that weren't released initially and that was kind of the challenge because we hadn't made a record for three or four years so i actually had had a little more material than usual so usually they would not have we just would have uh, filtered out the best 12 and cut them but we we did 15 or 16 so so it was kind of hard sequencing it actually sequencing is you know just making the order of the songs and which <coughs> sure making which aren't that can be tricky it's funny it's that's a whole art by itself because it's like it kind of becomes a little mini concert like because each song based on the tempo and the key and the style kind of leads into another song a different way and you can mess with that and so we took quite a while on the sequencing and we also put a lot of work into the sounds like mm -hmm. I think more than any of our previous albums, we wanted it to sound really raw and organic, but big still. So I think we pretty much nailed that. I'm pretty happy with the sound, the sound of it too. So. Oh yeah, it's great. Great album. Well, and there's, I mean, there's so many songs that I that I like uh, about this record. Um, um, we can get into so much stuff, but before we get into this, um, Brandon, I don't know if you got that email I sent you earlier today, but. We don't get to do this very often, uh, Corb, but every once in a while, Brandon likes to do a, a thing he calls a uh, country celebrity crush. Um, and uh, I found this. Uh, I don't I don't, I don't know if this will mean something to you or not, but uh, yeah, go, go ahead and run that, Brandon. Celebrity crushes. Core blend. Core blend. Core blend. Core blend. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> buddy, that's my buddy Jada. <laughs> I was giving her, I was giving her hell about that the other day. It's pretty that's before we knew we ever had ever met. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> She's, she's become a really good, a really good friend. We've written a ton, some some tunes together, and as you as you are probably alluding to, she cut a couple of duets on on the mm -hmm. record. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna, do, we're gonna do some more of that. We we found that we really like we have good uh, good performance chemistry together. Mm -hmm. People seem to like it, and our our voices have a good Loretta Conway thing going on. You know. Yeah. Well, and you both you both have that that quirky songwriting sensibility i mean she's got her jacked up to jesus stuff and and all that actually i actually uh worked at the independent record label that released her first album really which record yeah that? uh that was a uh, stream sound records okay. when she did when she did her her first album way back um so yeah so i've known i've known jada for a while and i i was like hey um this is happening and she's like <laughs> I got you. <laughs> oh, did she, but did she, she did she send you that clip? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have, have you seen our horse spore video? We had, a, we had we had a fantasy wedding because the 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 the, the bridge. I'll play that tune for you next. But the bridge okay. is, is just kind of a takeoff on um, on wedding vows, and so we had a, like a a fake wedding ceremony in the in the um, in the video. 
She made like, I, commemorative I posters and the whole bit. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I did. I did not see that one. <laughs> I did not see that. <laughs> I love that too. But yeah, I mean, she. I mean, she wrote some songs with you, and then y'all did the the duet, right? Now yeah. she didn't write that, or am I wrong? That's correct. Yeah, we. Okay. It started off with this horse pour song. I'll play you, which is right. It's just kind of a fun gag about women's women a woman spending the guy's money on horses. But um <laughs> so she was writing that and she said she wanted me to help finish it, so we cut it. And then I had written I think you ought to try whiskey, which is right. kind of a Johnny June kind of a thing. And I was honest to be I she knows this, but I, I was gonna try and get Dolly or somebody to do it with me, right? Or you know, um and, and I so but but um Jada was in the studio cutting horse pour with me. And I, so I got her to cut that because we just as a demo, so I could show some huge famous stars, whatever. Yeah. And then she nailed it and we thought, shit, that's pretty good. So we just kept her part. Yeah. Yeah. So she also, well, she also helped me write Raining Horses as well, which is on the record. So yeah, she has pretty, pretty big footprint on this thing. <clears throat> yeah. 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 So, well, I just, yeah, I just, I just love the, the, so much of this stuff is awesome. <clears throat> yep. And that. I think you ought to try whiskey corp that blew me away too because you're right about her vocals about uh ought to try gin at the end of it too and you're saying whiskey and she's doing gin and back and forth and that really that chemistry is hard to hard to find with with a duet that's pretty cool yeah we're well part of it's because we've, we've known each other forever and we, it's just kind of fun we played that song live a bunch too and the other one we're gonna i think we're gonna write some more duets we're gonna do a duet ep one of these days i think Ooh, well that's a good we're, project we're right there on, uh, we're working on uh was was fort worth worth it really that's okay, <laughs> it's a classic uh, uh, country song. You can actually like, interesting to see how the the uh, voice the vocals come out on that too. And uh, hey, let's let's play another one, uh, Corp from the album Agricultural Tragic, and yeah. uh, so many good ones to choose from. <laughs> Dealer's I'll, choice. I'll play this duet. This is the one Jade and I cut, and we just released on the deluxe thing. And I gotta sing her part because it's, it's she's not here, so I, I gotta sing, <laughs> I gotta sing the, the gal part too. This is I tell people this is about uh. A story about a man in love with a woman and a woman in love with their horses. There you go. <laughs> Common Western affliction. <laughs> Folks think you're rich when they see you have horses. Well, that might be true if my income sources weren't eating up every month on the boardage for all of her four legged friends. My captain says that my funds are depleted, but I keep my wealth right where I can see it in pastures and barns and in show arenas. And because of the money she spends, well, horse, 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 I sell one, she buys two more luxuries than could afford. If we was rich in our horse, poor. Okay, here's Jaden's part. He must have forgot the show where he met me. He said the way I sat in my saddle was sexy. Said a cowgirl like me was worth every penny. You better start making sense now, my dear. You can build me a barn and it better be heated with a whole lot of stalls and hire some kid to clean it. Buy me a stud and smile when you feed it, cause we're just getting started around here. We're a horse, poor, horse, poor. I sell one, she buys three more. Luxuries we could afford if we was rich and not horse poor. By the power that's vested in me by the ponies, you shall be saddled in this matrimony. I now pronounce you man, wife, and horses. You may kiss all your money goodbye. Horse, poor, horse, poor. I sell once you buy for more the luxuries than could afford. If we was rich and not horse poor. Horse, poor, horse, poor. I sell once you buy for more luxuries. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle, and the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Uh, that's good stuff right there. Core Blunt on the backstage pass here with us. And Jeff, I'm ready to go back to a dance hall. And go dancing. I haven't done that for. I'm like, ready. No, I mean not with you. Well, I'm no, not no, dancing no. with you. But. 
<laughs> hey, we could, you know, if, if Jada's out there to dance hall, Corp can ask her to dance. I'll bring my wife and, and Jeff will, will set you up, no doubt. It'll be a good thing. So <laughs> a little swing there too. Love that. Love that song. Um, hey, back to the album too, Corp Agricultural Tragic, the deluxe edition. Um, y'all did put out uh, Grizzly Bear Blues. I, that's another one I thought thought was uh, just hit me out of nowhere off the album. Where'd that come from? Well, where I'm from, that's kind of, you know, if you live in Hawaii, it's probably sharks. If you live someplace, <laughs> you know, lions. But where I'm from, it's 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 grizzly bears. That's what gets talked about around the campfire every, every you know, when you're drinking whiskey. Because every once in a while, it's pretty real. It, it, it's not like you get to run into it every day, but people do get eaten by grizzlies once in a while. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and it's like, it's one of those things where there's just a bunch of, BS that flies around like should you run or should you stay still or should you quiet or make noise if you climb the tree don't climb the tree all that so the song is just kind of like a compendium of all the all the uh misinformation about yeah. grizzly bears some of it's true some of it is and I don't I, I don't think anybody really knows what to do but uh yeah it's about uh it's about bears and the bridge has there's an old joke I'm sure maybe it applies to other animals but in the bridge, it talks about how you don't actually have to outrun the bear. You just have to outrun your slow right. body, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, uh, it's yeah, good... I worked in the national park mm -hmm. when I was younger out of high school. And, and you see some ridiculous tourist behavior around. Like, it's insane. Like, they just don't, I guess they don't know. But, like, don't pet that cub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't pick up that cub. <laughs> I got a, a story. I'm going to piggyback off that too. Cause I was in, this is a funny story too. Cause I, I'm just that, how do I just credit this here? Well, let's just say you're, he's right about the excitement, Jeff. Cause I'll tell this story. We're in Canada in 2017 going through, I think it was Jasper national park there in Alberta. And my friends are taking me on a tour there and um, we're going hiking and doing all that. And as we pull up, he's, he's right about that. Especially getting into the national park area. You see the cubs and the grizzlies everywhere. Well, First one I'd seen Corb, and it's a bad idea. I rolled down my window, and I'm like, unlock that door. I'm going to pull that handle. I'm going to pet that cub. My buddy just, no, you're not. And he pulled me back in, and I'm sitting there going, he goes, you know what it can do? I said, I get it's a bear. I'm not stupid. I get that. But that's you're right about the national parks. The first thing people want to do yeah. is, is pet the cub. And you see them there because it's, hey, it stops you in your tracks. It's it's like bone yeah, chilling. It's They're cool. They're cool. They're cool. Um creatures and the thing about the cubs is like mama's always nearby right so that's mm -hmm. yeah the other thing smart. is we got big cats up here too that are like big, <laughs> big cougars uh, that'll get you i did not get out of the car jeff i did not get out of the car they pulled me in and it blocked blocked it and they kept on driving so he he's right about the the, the cats too which is <laughs> good there. well about Je the the, about the closest i can get is uh <laughs> i went to baylor university and the bear was our mascot that's as close as I can get to to either of you. <laughs> yeah, Corbin, I love hunting like you do too. So it's always fun to get out there and, and you know deer hunt, whatever it is, hogs. It's it's just uh, fun. And I, part of it is not even having to. Sometimes you can go out there and just enjoy the the nature, the the, the silence, kind of the solitude. It's just a beautiful uh, way to enjoy nature. I think. Have you ever read Have you ever read uh, the book by Ortega, Meditations on Hunting? I have not. It's, it's it was written in Spanish to begin with, I think. But it's you should read it. It's really cool. It, it's funny because people talk about the progressions of hunting. Like when you first start out when you're 20, you're really into guns and calibers and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then and then as you get a bit older, you're into you know finding an animal to, to harvest. And then and as you get older, you don't care as much as if you if you even get a shot off. It's, <laughs> more, it's more about being out there, right? Yeah, it's the best part well, of it too. And and you, you know, Corb, it's it's kind of interesting. I'm I'm listening to you to you talk, and and I'm wondering where this, where all of this lands in your music, because um, uh, you you seem to be very much a student. Uh, I mean, I I love the the grizzly bear stuff and Rat Patrol and those quirky things, the gothest girl I can off of another record. I forget which record it was in. But then when I, when I listened to um, 90 seconds of your time and, and, and you talk about the book that you just talked about. And uh, uh, one of the songs I liked was Louis L'Amour, you know, off of this record, which 
you know, obviously everybody would know as the, as the Western author, but then you also have to slide CM Russell in as a, you know, the, the artist, I just, you know, you, you seem to, to constantly just kind of soak in all sorts of information and put it all into your music. Is that accidental? Is it just uh, curiosity? Is it, what, what, what is your goal with all of that as a writer? Well, yeah, it's partly cure. I'm terminally curious. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, read, I read a lot and I, I mean, my background's pretty Western. So the, the Russell and, and that and Louis L'Amour and all, all that kind of stuff is, I grew up with that stuff, but yeah, I, I have wide ranging interests and I, I read and I find mm -hmm. interesting people interesting. And I, <laughs> I, I don't really see, like I was talking about before my, my writing process has no real parameters to it. And I, Probably because, I, like I said, I started in a wild setting where you're encouraged to be a nut bar. But like, I, I don't know how I would even like I've done a few writing sessions, you know, with, with, aimed at a more I, mainstream, I guess, sort of target with 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 artists because they like my stuff and want to write with me. But I just can't really. Maybe I could if I did it more, but I've never really been spent a lot of time fitting my stuff into any particular i just i just go where it takes me so if mm -hmm. i've been if i've been reading about home rentals i'll write a song like uh hard on equipment if i've been hanging out with my old rig buddies i'll write roughest neck around if i'm hanging out with some of my veteran buddies i write those tunes i just soak up and it comes out again yeah and the cool thing is i'm lucky because i know people i have a lot of friends in the country business and and i feel like they don't maybe have as much fun as me because they they have to if you're really shooting for the radio thing you, you know how it goes you got to really stay in a real narrow box right and i don't do any of that thankfully i i mean that's not a judgment i just really if people dig that stuff that's cool but i just mm -hmm. i just like the weirdo stuff that's what I, <laughs> yeah that's, that's what i listen to and that's what i like to do well i i i don't think it is weirdo stuff i think it's i mean it I, I kind of think of it as <laughs> as you really trying to embrace the craft, you know, I mean, it's, uh, you know, let all of that stuff speak and influence and all. I mean, I'm not a writer, I, you know, I mean, I've written a few things here and there, but not at all to what you do, but I can imagine, you know, when people are sitting around and they're kind of going, Oh, it's, it's April. We need to cut a song about trucks or we need to cut a song about cutoffs or we need, I don't think there's a group of people saying, you know, we just need to come up with our own spin on the most gothest girl I can find. So we need another goth girl song. I don't, I don't think that's happening. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, maybe not. I, I, it's, it sounds a little cliche, but, but I honestly, I just follow the inner voice. I just do it. I just, I mean, and I'm fortunate that I have an audience that accepts that and, it seems to be willing to follow me wherever I go so far, knock on wood, but it's like, um, yeah, I just, I just enjoy writing about unusual things. I'm mean, not everything I write about is unusual. I just, I just write about whatever I find cool at the time, mm -hmm. which is kind of a, I'm for like, a, again, for the third time, I feel fortunate about that. Cause I know people that aren't in that position. So I, I just do what I do. Well, I just, I just, I don't, I don't even see it as unusual. It just, it just seems extraordinarily broad, which is great. Yeah. It's great. Um, you know the the all the musical influences and you know i'm 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 not i'm not hearing uh you know i'm not hearing some of the you know new guys that we confuse with one another on the radio i'm i'm i feel like i'm sitting around with you and mac davis and roger miller and robert earl keen and and waylon and uh i mean, I, just, I i think it's a blessing you know for you i think it's awesome Thanks. Well, that's high praise. Appreciate it. <laughs> well, you're, you're damn good at it. The the album delivered too, Corb. That's how good it is. <laughs> you, you, know, you, mentioned, you mentioned Roger Miller. It's funny because um, depending on the kind of show I'm doing, like I've got some tunes that are kind of lighthearted and fun, and then I've got other ones that are more serious. But sometimes at you know, one in the morning at the bar, people want to hear the rowdy fun stuff, which is totally fine with me, but that's only one part of my personality. And so every once in a while, if I played five or six of those in a row and I'm like, man, nobody cares about the good stuff. They just want to hear the stupid shit about the trucks or whatever. But then, <laughs> but then I remember 
Jerry Reed and jo Roger Miller, and I feel better about myself because <laughs> those guys made a whole career of doing that wacky stuff. So I love Roger. I love Jerry Reed, man. Jerry Reed is like awesome actor, awesome singer, and performer, like great songwriter, and like world class melt your face off guitar picker too, right? Like oh, awesome. killer, killer! I never, I never believed him in the fight scene from Gator, though. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, he just he just couldn't have held up in that fight. There's a long tradition of country singers having some questionable roles. So, yeah, I'll give him a pass on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I got to hear one more, Corb, off the album, uh, Agricultural Tragic, out there across all digital platforms. Let's play another one here, and uh, we'll come back and close it out, my friend. Uh, okay. Dealer's Choice. All right. I like this. This is one of my favorites. Um, I've written a lot of tunes about my, my dad. He was a veterinarian and a – pro rodeo cowboy and a rancher but i i've been meaning to write one about mom for years and i never could find the right angle she grew up on horseback and and uh on the ranch and and um she she's 80 now 79 or 80 and she 78 something like that anyway she she a couple of years ago three or four years ago she had to put down the last couple of horses on the place because the winter was coming and it, they were just too frail it was, it was a humane thing to do and that's that's a pretty heavy day of course and we were waiting for the vet to show up and, and she just kind of commented that she'd never not had horses, like from when she was born till that moment. And I was like, damn, that's that's the angle, I think. So I wrote this for mom. Cool. Made her cry, actually. <laughs> well, she's never not had horses and she don't know what to do. The few left on the place are lame, their ribs are showing too. But she knows it ain't fair to them with winter coming soon. She's never not had horses and she don't know what to do. That's some kind of cabbie around she don't know who she is. She grew up training cattle in the Rockies every year. She rode with one schoolhouse the letters pass your way and each day the greatest teacher is just outside tied to the way she's never not had horses she's rode a whole lot through tied a couple ponies round what's an old cowgirl meant to do Lots of oats, but they won't keep on anyway. You can't rope off a jackie now. What about to lose the pain? She dreams about a green rope coat, but her knees are bad too. She's never not had horses, and she don't know what to do. She's never not had horses. She's marked her time with horses that she's loved. And now she's all alone out there with DC gone, it's tough. The vet's just up the road and tells her it's for their own good. But when it's time to place the call, I ask you, who among you could? She's never not had horses. She's 
never not had horses and she don't know what to do. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. And back here with Cora Blonde as we finish out the show, man. Fantastic playing today in the album. Agricultural Tragic, the deluxe edition is out there across all the uh, digital platforms. And some of the comments coming in are great. Elvin says, great song. And, of course, uh, Craig have been to hundreds of country and rock concerts. Corp Deliver is one of the best ever. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to get to a live show one day. William, for Christmas, I gave the album to a dear friend who had never not had horses. And Karen loved that song. So some of the comments there, Corp, as we uh, – <laughs> wrap up the show here too. I got to get to uh, Jeff and I we'll have to get out to a show and, and Jeff, you, we're not dancing together. I'm just uh, making that uh, clear on, on the show here. <laughs> All right, Corb. Hey Jeff, is the exit in? What's going on with the exit in? Uh, they are, I think they just found a buyer for it that says they are going to preserve it. Now, I don't know exactly what that means. That's been, in the in the last few days um so i don't know the specifics of that a week ago they were trying to raise money and awareness and all of that to to try to keep it in motion and then i saw something come by a couple of days ago that said uh somebody had bought it and they were going to try to preserve it um and actually now that you're bringing that up i can ask you the same question what's happening with ranchments <laughs> i don't know i i heard that it was it was sold, but I heard that they might keep it intact. But it's already been like the ranchments for people to know. It's it's in Calgary, Alberta, where the Calgary Stampede is, and it's it's the legit cowboy bar in town when when the rodeos on. That's where the competitors go. And yeah. there's a but they had a bunch of like my uncles all had like they had a deal for a long time. If you're a if you're a, a pro rodeo cowboy, you could hang up one of your trophy saddles in there. You you get a mm -hmm. fifty dollar bar tab for life. <laughs> And yeah, I, a couple of my uncles had one of them, had them in there and stuff, but those are all gone now. They've taken them out and given them back to people. And they've, oh, I wow. think they've taken some of the stuff out. So I don't know. A lot of these venues, once they go away, they're never coming back the same way, right? It's sad. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. It's too bad. It is too. Corbin, we're going to ask you a little couple of rapid fire questions here as we kind of get to the close for the show here. And we'd love to have you back too in a, in a few months to kind of follow up on the album and everything. Um, got to ask you about the, the binge watching. If you're a, a TV watcher, was there a, a series that you got into kind of shortly after the, the pandemic? Well, are we counting Tiger King or not? Yeah, we can. <laughs> that seems to be the most popular one. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was, we had to watch that one. I think, you know, I'm a little late to the party with Yellowstone, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting deep into that one. That's, that's, that's pretty damn good. <laughs> well, that's probably, that's probably good for you though, because you don't have that as long of a dry spell waiting on the next season. That's right. Yeah, I can do it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right in my backyard too. We're we're only our ranch is only half an hour from Montana. So and whoever did that show, they must have some good consulting because you know, sometimes when when they do cowboy stuff, they don't quite get it right. Like the terminology is not quite right or the clothes aren't quite right. But somebody on that show is is advising because they, they know what they're talking about and they, they they sound authentic and they look right. It's pretty cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I'll finish with this one too, Corb. What, uh, what's been the food of choice lately? I mean, pretty much like me, probably anything that's like carbs or, or a carnivore type stuff, the meat, what's, what's been the food of choice? I've been eating on the dough I shot last fall. <laughs> <laughs> that's <a> good idea. <laughs> yeah. Early, early on, I wanted to make sure I had, had a, some, some, uh, venison in the freezer because it was weird there for a couple of weeks. No one really knew what, you know, there was all, you know, everybody's mind was going crazy. Like civilization was going to collapse and all that. So yeah, right. got, a little, got a little funny. So I made sure I was stocked up. <laughs> hey man, I got me an axis a couple of years ago. And I tell you, man, like you said, the dough or the axis or any of that meat out there for deer meat is, is damn good. And the music's damn good. Uh, agricultural tragic across all the digital platforms. Check him out uh, corblon.com and Corb, We appreciate the time here on the show, man. Looking forward to uh, catching up somewhere down the line. Yeah, I'm excited to come back to Texas and Tennessee, too. I'll be down come as soon as I can. <laughs> you come on. Come on with it, brother. <laughs> come on with it. The one the only core blind here on the backstage pass. Go get the album, folks, uh, if you don't have it already. It's good stuff out there. Just as Bangtail Whiskey and Tour Guitars, and we'll check you guys here with Nashville recording artist Dave Wilbert here in just a minute. Thanks to a great audience today. 
for tuning in. We'll see you guys here in a little bit with Dave Wilbert on the Backstage Pass. Stay tuned.